if we have to find out take into account the spin orbit coupling we have to take into account three interactions spin spin interactions orbital orbital interactions and spin orbit interactions this comes under the scope of russell saunders coupling and this is applicable only for light atoms from spin spin coupling we find out the total spin quantum number s and then from orbital orbital coupling we calculate l and from the coupling of spin and orbital quantum numbers we calculate j so now once we have information about s l and j values then we are in a position to write down the term symbol so as you can see here each set of s l and j values characterizes an energy state and this energy state is also called term of the atom so term symbol actually is a symbol for the energy state so that point has to be kept in mind and for a atom there could be a number of terms for an atom as we will see later on this was the reason which was responsible for the fine structure of the hydrogen atom spectrum and then once we have all this information then term symbol is written by the following method the term symbol is expressed as as you can see here 2s plus 1 lj here this s is the total spin quantum number which comes from spin spin coupling and then this 2s plus 1 is taken and this whole will be a number so this is written here then l is the code letter here so we know that we had calculated orbital quantum number total coming from orbit orbit coupling this quantum number had certain code that code letter is put corresponding to the corresponding value and then j which is the total grand total angular momentum quantum number that comes here so, so can we in a way say that this uh, term symbol has contribution from or in a way representation from all the three spin orbital as well as total yes this is some this is the beauty of term symbol that it gives us information about these three things and that is the spin orbital and total angular momentum mm -hmm. if you see that as as is quite apparent from here in the term symbol 2s plus 1 lj 2s plus 1 which comes from the spin this gives us the multiplicity of the state so this information comes from here then j is the total angular momentum quantum number as we discussed and the value of the orbital angular momentum quantum number l is expressed by this letter this code if l is 0 then we will write here s if l comes out to be 1 then we will call it a p state it is a capital p please see that it's always in capital letters unlike s p d f orbitals which we designate in small alphabets while writing down the electronic configurations so those are orbitals here it is the orbital angular momentum quantum number code and if l is 2 then instead of 2 here we will write down the corresponding d so this is the method which we will use to express this l so that is how this term symbol is actually written In example a we have the configuration s1 as you can see here and in example b we have the configuration s1 s1 this is a case of non equivalent protons you can see here and this third example is of s1 p1 configuration and the last is p1 d1 so we will start with this configuration a s1 it is a case of a single electron yes. which is present in s orbital it could be the ground state of hydrogen atom so for this configuration this is the set of s l and j values which we get for this configuration only one set of s l j values come now this set values are written here you can see s is half l is 0 and j is half s comes to be half i am just repeating because there was one electron 
with a spin half, so s is half. L comes out to be 0 because it was in s orbital and for s orbital azimuthal quantum number small l is 0 and that is the only electron present that is why it came out to be 0. And j which comes from the addition or subtraction it comes out to be half. So, once we have these three values with us using these three values we can write down the corresponding term symbol and this term symbol comes out to be using this method 2 s plus 1. Now, 2 s plus 1 using half would be 2. So, this 2 comes here and now since L is 0 and for 0 L the corresponding code letter is S. Therefore, this comes S and J is half. So, we say it 2 S half state. So, this is the term symbol for this configuration. So, so all S 1 uh, configurations uh, like hydrogen atom or for that matter alkali metals also have this same uh, Yes, I think you have raised a very yeah. important point here that all those elements which will have S1, S1 configuration, yeah. they will have this term symbol. But in this there is one very important point which one needs to remember and that is that the closed shells which are inside, yeah. they will make no contribution to the term symbol. So, for example, if you have lithium, in lithium the ground state configuration is 1S2, 2S1. Now, 1 s 2 is a closed shell and therefore, it will make no contribution to the term symbol. So, you can straightway go to 2 s 1. Yeah, so, so s that is, one is the thing they should So, uh, that is basically the valence configuration which you will be considering here and that is how you can write down the term symbol. So, this was a case of a very simple example which we discussed. Now, we can go to the next example and that is the case of s 1 s 1 electron. As you can see here, if we have got this S1, S1 configuration, it could be like 1S1, 2S1 or 2S1, 3S1 where the two electrons are non-equivalent. For this configuration, we have also calculated the corresponding S, L and J values and they come out to be S values were 2, 2 allowed values of S were 1 and 0 and the allowed value of L was only 0. And if this 0 is taken with 1, then the j becomes 1. And if this 0 is coupled with this s, then it becomes 0. So, for this configuration, there are two sets of s, l and j values. As you can see here, when s is 1, l is 0, j is 1. This is one set. And the second set is when s is 0, l is 0 and j is 0. For this set and for this set, the term symbols are written by the same method which we have discussed. Here s is 1, so spin multiplicity will be 2 s plus 1 that is 3, l is 0, so the corresponding code letter is s and j is 1. So, it will be 3 s 1 state and for s 0 0 0, it would be 1 s 0 state. So, this is the other term symbol which will be possible for this configuration. So, for this configuration now we have seen that for the configuration S1, S1 of two non-equivalent electrons, two term symbols are possible or two energy states are possible. This is a very important result which we get from here. So, similarly you know we can go to little more complicated cases and the more complicated cases can be the case where we have not only the two non-equivalent electrons in S orbital, but one of the non-equivalent electron is in s orbital and the other is in p orbital. Let us take up this case which is the case c which we are considering here. You can see here that in this case s 1 p 1 configuration, the corresponding values of s l and j, these will be the values of s, these will be the values of l and these will be the values of j. Now, you can see that why these three values of j come? They come from s is equal to 1 and l is equal to 1. When s is equal to 1 and l is equal to 1, they couple, they give 1 plus 1, 2 and 1 minus 1, 0. So, the all values allowed would be 2, 1 and 0. So, for this configuration, as now we can see from here, there will be 4 terms possible and the term symbols for these are, as you can see here, one is S1, L1 and allowed values are J. Now, 
in this S L are the same. So, spin multiplicity will remain 3 and L is 1. So, the code letter comes P. So, in all of them 3 P comes to be the common and then J values could be 2, 1 and 0. Therefore, 1 could be 3 P 2, 1 could be 3 P 1 and the last is 3 P 0. So, these are the three term symbols corresponding to this set of S L and J values. And similarly, for the lower one also you can see in this configuration also you can see that when S is 0 and L is 1 and J is 1, then the corresponding term symbol would be 1 P 1. So, you cannot say by looking at the configuration that what are the term symbols, you have to go through the regular procedures of Russell Saunders coupling at each stage and then find out the different set of SLJ values before coming to the corresponding term symbols. I think they should remember uh, Klebisch Gordon series for working out uh, all these L and J and S values. Yes, yes. I think without that which you cannot are, do. Which, yes, because that is a must. Yeah. So, but one thing more I would like to mention here that in all these cases we have taken the case of two electrons. Yeah. Sometimes if there are three electrons, you imagine a case, there first you take two electrons and whatsoever results you get, then you combine it with the results of the third electron yeah. and again apply the same series to calculate the corresponding values of S, so L and J. It is a little more complex situation which they can also handle. Oh, yes. So, for example, in this case, now this let us take now most complicated yeah. case which we can take now and this is this case as you can see here that uh, for P1, P1 configuration, if you see that we have got the values of S, L and J in this case are these, they I think uh, this can be done by uh, the students themselves, these are the corresponding values of S, L and J, they can verify it themselves and then corresponding to the different set of S, L and J values by the similar procedures, we have all these yes. term symbols which would be possible. Professor Bakshi, various states which you have uh, taken as an example here, S1 they are easily able to correlate with the hydrogen or alkali metal configuration, but like P1, P1, S1, P1 or P1, D1, there may be configurations which may or may not seem realistic to them. So, uh, shall we not tell our learners that they are all excited state? They are all excited states, also, yes. And they, they may or may not exist in the ground uh, level. Yes, that is right. But you know, uh, one thing which one should not forget that when I say P1, P1 configuration, here it is a case of two P electrons which are non equivalent. That means they are in different principal quantum numbers, maybe 2P1 or 3P1. Yeah. So, it will be a case of non equivalent P electrons. But Normally, they would think that how is it, pro it possible because as you very rightly pointed out that when they do the case of carbon, in carbon we have atomic number 6 and so the configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Now, there also you have 2 electrons in 2p, but those 2 electrons are equivalent electrons and so the case of equivalent electrons will be totally different from the case of non-equivalent electrons because for equivalent electrons certain other rules also come into picture which have to be taken into account and then many of the term symbols get eliminated because of those rules. Yeah, this question comes to learners because when they write the configuration, they write as P1, P2 and uh, equivalence they are at times able to realize, at times they are not able to visualize that yeah. these are non-equivalent or equivalent electrons. Yes, slowly and I think, think uh, they have to do a lot of practice and then uh, they have to take the case of equivalent or non-equivalent electrons. Best thing is that always do the case of non-equivalent electrons and then apply the conditions of equivalence mm -hmm. and eliminate all those term symbols right. which are then not allowed. So, that could be one case by which one can come to the exact term symbols. So, uh, I think with this uh, background, I personally feel that once you know the configuration and mind it that in our discussion, we are laying emphasis only on the case of non-equivalent electrons. Yeah. Equivalent electrons case becomes a little more complicated and for non-equivalent electrons, the term symbols are written. Now, one thing is that once you know the configuration, from configuration you are able to write down the term symbols. Other thing is that once you have the term symbol, a lot of information comes also from by looking at the term symbol also. 
So, that point also one should not forget that what information is conveyed by the term symbol. As you can see here that this information comes from the term symbol. If this is the term symbol for any configuration, then by looking at the term symbol for that energy state, one can calculate all the three types of angular momenta. Total spin angular momentum you can calculate because this is 2s plus 1, you can calculate from here s, substitute s here and you are able to calculate the total spin angular momentum. Then from the code, you can find out what is the value of L and once you know the value of L, you can calculate the total orbital angular momentum. And the third thing is from this j value, you can calculate the grand total angular momentum, which comes as a result of the coupling of these two momenta. So, this is a very important point that by looking at the term symbol, you can find out what is the total spin angular momentum, what is the total orbital angular momentum and what is the grand total angular momentum of that state. But please remember that it does not give you information about the number of electrons present in an atom because as I said in the case of lithium, you will take only 2 s 1 into account. How many electrons are in the inner shells or in the closed shells that remain behind the scene and so you do not know which atoms you are dealing. For example, all alkali metals will have the same ground state configuration at least the light ones and therefore, you do not have any idea about what will the total number of electrons in an atom. So, this is a very important point which one has to remember and one more important information Professor Nita, I would like to share with you is that if sometimes more than one term symbols are possible for any configurations. This also helps us in finding out which term symbol corresponds to more stable energy state. Okay. So, this is one information which also the students would like to know because if a lot of terms term symbols are possible, then you would like to know that which term symbol corresponds to the most stable electronic yeah, configuration. Definitely because energy levels when you are uh, talking about definitely if uh, more than one levels exist, they would like to know which is having the lowest energy and from where transition will start, where it will end to. So, in that hierarchy, the order of energy levels is very important. I think yes. that knowledge how to uh, arrive at that will so, be a really good uh, thing to tell to our learners. There are certain rules and which give you information about the relative energies of different energy states and there is certain a criteria which needs to be remembered and here we are showing this uh, criteria as you can see from here that the state which has got the largest value of S. See if the state, the state which has got the largest value of S is the most stable and stability decreases with decreasing s. That means, the state which has the maximum spin multiplicity yes. will be the most stable. Second is, if there are states with the same spin multiplicity, if they have the same s, so spin multiplicity will be the same. In those states, the state with the largest value of l will be the most stable. So, these two are very important rules. First is entirely on the basis of spin multiplicity and this is to differentiate between different states with the spin, same spin multiplicity where you find that L becomes the criteria for deciding the most stable energy state. And in addition to that, there is the third rule that if the states have also the same L and S, then because they may have the same S L L, but they may be differing in J, mm -hmm. then in that case the rule is that for a subshell that is less than half filled, the state with the smallest value of j is the most stable and that state or that subshell which has more than half filled, the state with the largest value of j is the most stable. So, these are basically the rules which help us to find out which term symbol corresponds to the most stable energy state depending upon the configuration of the atom. So, can we say that they have to look into the order that first look at uh, S then L then J yes. in this order if all the S values are same 
yes then look at uh, l value then if l is same go for j whether uh, it is more than half filled or less than half filled yes you know with all this background of calculating term symbol and of how to find out term symbol corresponding to a given configuration so this is something new which students are learning because this is normally not in many courses but it's a new thing which you are learning and now with this background we will like to give more confidence to you through certain examples which we will like to yes. take up and we will like to discuss how the knowledge which we have acquired so far how that can be used in solving some of the problems which they may have to face relating to spin orbit coupling so as we can see we have taken just one example as you can see here here the question is that deduce the values of j associated with the term symbol 3d now suppose this is the question that deduce the value of j associated with the term symbol d3 now for this this much information is given this j is missing now how you can come to the value of j so it's a very simple thing but you should proceed in a systematic way first step should be you should find out that for a 3d state since it is d this is the code for l is equal to 2 so l is equal to 2 and then since spin multiplicity is 3 therefore s is equal to 1 so this you are able to get from this much information that l is equal to 2 and s is equal to 1 so that means we know the result of spin spin coupling and we also know the result of orbit orbit coupling so now the next thing is nothing else but to find out the allowed values of j using the procedure which we have already discussed so allowed values of j from s plus l to s minus l absolute would be three values 3 2 and 1 so you can see that now three possible values of j are these one and with these three possible values of j the three term symbols which would be possible would be 3d3 3d2 and 3d1 so this is how you can use your knowledge to complete the term symbols of the configuration so can we say each letter or each code or each symbol has its own uh, significant meaning and it has something hidden in uh, some information hidden in a way in a shortened form oh yes yes and uh, if they uh, are able to uh, decode it yes. or read it uh, what is uh, meant by that particular symbol or the code and the number they can very well play with the whatever is the information hidden as far as the atomic state is concerned or energy state of the atom is concerned yes yes so uh, we have not uh, so far uh, missed our focus because we are we ultimately want to go back to the atomic spectra uh, by taking all these uh, basic or uh, step wise information like how many states are possible how to attach a particular symbol to a particular state and then coming back finally to the Uh, atomic spectra uh, there is one question which i would still like to discuss with the audience and that is as you can see here that this is the question which we have put now you can attempt it yourself also that what is wrong with the following atomic term symbols now look at this question now what is wrong with the following atomic term symbols so now let's let's look at 4s1 first yeah if you apply logic they are able to uh, arrive at the results otherwise i mean every symbol looks right or wrong yes so question is now how to approach this problem yeah. so let's learn that now as you can see from this problem 4s1 let's look at this as soon as you see 4 it means that spin multiplicity 2s plus 1 is 4 that means s is 3 by 2 so s is 3 by 2 that comes from this and then as you can see that s is given here that for this s state for l is equal to 0 so l becomes 0 because of this s yes. so now l is 0 and s which came from spin multiplicity that was 3 by 2 so 3 by 2 plus 0 or 3 by 2 minus 0 would make it j equal to 3 by 2 so this now j cannot be 1 so this is wrong with this term symbol yeah. that it should be 4s 3 by 2 yeah. so, so this 4 which you were saying from where we calculated s is equal to 3 by 2 that s is different from the letter code s 
Ah, that that should good. be clear to them so that they should not confuse with the two S. Yes, yes, being yes. Used. That is that is. I think that's a very important point which you have raised. That two S plus one in that two S plus one S is the corresponding total spin quantum number. Yes. And this S which is given here that is basically the code for orbital angular momentum L equals zero. So this point. Now one more we will take up and the rest they can do themselves. Now. Look at this 2d 7 by 2. Let us try to see that. Now, uh, once we say that it is 2, 2 state, spin multiplicity is 2, it means that s has to be equal to, if you put it 2s plus yeah, 1 half. equals 2, s has to be equal to half. That means this is the case of s equals half. And now d is l is equal to 2. So, half plus 2 value would be 2 and two a half, and half or 2 minus half would make it yeah. 1 and a half. So, now now you can see what is wrong with this. So, it should be either 5 by 2 or it should be 3 by 2. Three by it two. cannot be 7 by 2. Yes. So, that does not agree with this. Rest I think the third. Yeah, I think the procedure should be clear to them that they have to start with a multiplicity, calculate S, look for the next step uh, in the next step for the symbol. Yes. what it is meaning l s or p Correct. and accordingly uh, go for the l value and then look at the su uh, superscript after that symbol and then subscript yes. which gives you the j yes so i think these if are they the three steps they can follow one by one and check what is wrong where yes and if they apply this rule there will never be any problem yes. i think uh, because all these things need a lot of practice rules once you are familiar with then you start applying i think it slowly gets you a lot of confidence and if the and procedure is clear uh, it's very interesting to work out and see where uh, exactly the wrong thing is there and how to correct or route to write the correct uh, symbol yes so i think uh, uh, these points are very important and now uh, maybe the next question which we can see here as you see here is derive a ground state term symbol for boron now now, one has to, now this is the electronic configuration of boron and we have to derive its term symbol. So, as you can see that this is a completely filled subshell 1s2 and 2s2, they will make no contribution. So, for from the point of view of calculation of term symbol, we would be only interested in 2p1 configuration. So, it is a case of one electron present in p, p orbital. orbital. So, I think it should not be very difficult for the students to calculate this and let it be an exercise for you and uh, I would recommend that you do these exercises and many more problems and uh, if there are some still problems you can also discuss it with the advisors or teachers and I think that will slowly build you a lot of confidence. I think there are a number of problems possible in this uh, term symbols and working out energy states. But can we now take up the case of hydrogen spectra first and then if the time permits, yes. we can work out additional things for our learners. I think uh, Professor Smita, that is the right thing because when we started this series of lectures, we said that spin orbit coupling manifests itself in the spectra because it changes the energy state of the atoms and whether those changes in the energy state have occurred that will be reflected in the spectra. So, now we can see a simple case of hydrogen atom spectrum without spin orbit coupling and with spin orbit coupling and see what effect does spin orbit coupling have on the hydrogen atom spectrum. Now, look at this, this is hydrogen spectrum which we normally study and this is as per the Bohr model. This is the case where quantum mechanical treatment has not been considered. This is n is equal to 1 quantum number ground state, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 up to n is equal to infinity. These are the various principal quantum numbers allowed and n is equal to 1 is of course the ground state and the rest are the excited states. And this is a picture I think uh, all the students are familiar with whenever they, they are uh, taught the atomic structure or atomic spectra. This is the first uh, diagram they come across. And I would uh, request you to highlight the main features in terms of various series which are uh, denoted on this. Uh. Basically, in this figure, we are dealing with the emission spectra. The atom has already been excited and then it is coming to the ground state. If the excitation is from, if the excited electron comes back to the ground state, whether it is from principal quantum number 2 or 3 or 4, we call it to be the Lyman series. 
and this Lyman series comes in the ultraviolet region of electromagnetic radiation spectrum. And if the transition is up to n is equal to 2 from higher levels, then we call it a Balmer series. As you can see, this comes in the visible region here and if n is equal to 3, then we have the Paschen series and so on. So, these are the various series which are observed in the hydrogen atom spectrum and each spectral transition will occur at a energy corresponding to this energy difference and this comes in the spectra. So, this is basically the hydrogen spectrum on the basis of the Bohr model. But as I said, Bohr model was a very old model. There was something wrong in this because it did not take into account the wave nature of the electron and it also did not take into account the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and therefore, quantum mechanics came on the scene and quantum mechanical model of hydrogen atom gave us an altogether different picture and according to this model of quantum mechanics for hydrogen atom, here we can see the hydrogen spectrum. Now, instead of n is equal to 1, we, now we have 1s, 2s, 2p state. 3s, 3p, 3d energy states. So, this is the energy level diagram of hydrogen atom. As you can see that this is the case. One important point, Professor Sunita, which I would like to mention here and which is very important for the students to know is that in this hydrogen atom spectrum or energy level diagram, as you can see that we have shown 2s and 2p to be having the same energy. Similarly, 3s, 3p and 3d all have the same energy. This may be little puzzling to the students because they learn that uh, 2s is filled first and then 2p is filled like that. But please remember that is the case what we call to be the off-bow principle that is the case only for multi electron atoms. For a single electron atom these energy levels have the same energy at this level. So, 2s, 2p will have the same energy. Similarly, 3s, 3p, 3d all will have the same energy and the same with the 4. Yeah, with your this comment like they are all degenerate levels in case of hydrogen mm -hmm. and the degeneracy gets lifted only uh, when the second electron comes into the picture and then we talk about the multi electron systems. I would also uh, like you to explain little more of this diagram as you have uh, written selection rules on that top of that slide. Yes. So, how do the selections rules uh, come into play and how do they govern the transitions? Yes, the, as you can see in this diagram the selection rules are like this that transition delta n principal quantum number can change by any amount any number, but delta l which is the change in the azimuthal quantum number that should change by plus 1 or minus 1. That means, from 1 s through transition spectroscopic transition you cannot go to 2 s you can go only to 2 p. Because when you go from 1s to 2p, there is delta L is changing from S is for S L is 0 and for p orbital L is 1. So, delta L is changing by plus 1. Similarly, from 2p you can go to 3s because n may be changing by any amount that is ok, but then delta L is again here changing by minus 1. So, this is a very very important point and so this point has to be remembered and this comes basically from selection rules and selection rules are basically the rules which are governed by the basic science. And you know one can ask a question that why is it that delta L is always changing by plus 1 or minus 1. This is because of the fact that you cannot go from 1s to 2s because if you go from if you try to go from 1s to 2s through absorption of electromagnetic radiation, electromagnetic radiation as we all know consists of photons. Photons have some orbit, photons have some angular momentum. Now, electron in s orbital has no angular momentum and then a photon is incident on it and then it goes to 2s. 2s also there is no angular momentum. Then the question comes where is the angular momentum or where is the angular momentum coming from the photon gone? Because that will violate the rule of conservation of angular momentum. Therefore, 1s transition can occur only to 2s, uh, 2p and not to 2s. Yeah, this is very interesting piece of information because often when they try to write the excited state, so it immediately comes uh, from 1s next orbit is uh, 2s, 
they should not confuse with that yes so when we talk about selection rules and the electronic transitions we should keep in mind that delta l is equal to plus 1 or minus 1 and transitions can take place from s to p and then p back to s and d yes so this should be very clear to them and now uh, so nita at the final stages we will like to see that this picture which we showed that was the quantum mechanical model yes. but this was still without spin orbit spin coupling orbit coupling now we see what is the effect of spin orbit coupling which is the main theme of our this whole series of talks what is the main impact of this spin this spin orbit coupling on these energy levels as you can see from this picture that hydrogen spectrum here it is shown with fine structure now this is 1s level or 2s level or 3s level as we have already studied that they have these as the term symbols there is only one term symbol for each of these states but 2p level if one electron is in the 2p orbital there are two term symbols which are possible as you can see here 2p 3 by 2 and 2p half and similarly in 3p also there will be 2p 3 by 2 or 2p half and similarly 3d state has two levels with these term symbols so this is the energy level diagram which is as a result of spin orbit coupling and now you see that all these levels are split up into doublets some yeah. sort of thing and now once these are the levels and if we bring about the spectrum here then the selection rules change these are the selection rules delta l still changes by plus 1 or minus 1 but as you can see here that delta j changes from 0 to plus minus 1 and now that means from 1s you can go to 2p of course but then from 2s half to 2p half is okay because from here delta j would be zero because both are zero but from 2s half you can also go to 2p 3 by 2 where you can see that delta j has become plus 1 so this is again within that rule so that is why now this is something like if you come from 2p to this again it will be a case of lyman series so lyman series can come from here as well as from here so instead of getting one spectral line you will get a doublet yeah so this was the reason why uh, uh, the fine structure of hydrogen could not be explained yes i think this could not be, yes this is the success of yeah, quantum, quantum mechanics, mechanics and this is the reason that why in hydrogen atom spectrum you observe each spectral line to be made up of two fine lines and those fine lines result as a result of spin orbit coupling which follows the selection rules which we just mentioned professor bakshi you have uh, uh, really given an insight into the picture that what is happening at the atomic level and why a particular line is split into two when uh, a finer structure is observed can we quickly within uh, two or one minute give to our learners a gist of all the three lectures we had from where we started and where we ended whether we were able to achieve the objective i think yes to my mind because we wanted to explain the atomic structure and then atomic spectra so our purpose was to take into account spin orbit coupling an electron in an atom has two types of motion spin motion and orbital motion both motions have some orbit angular momentum associated with them now how to couple these two angular momenta that is basically the question in spin orbit coupling we discussed that this could be done by the method of russell saunders coupling in light atoms we said that there are three rules first you couple all the spins then you couple all the orbital motions and then the result which you get you couple both of them to get the total orbital angular momentum so from this you get the values of s l and j and once you know the values of s l and j one could write down the term symbol which is 2s plus 1 lj which could ultimately and which was the key figure in the whole of spin orbit coupling and on the basis of which we can also explain the fine spectrum so i think that was basically the gist of this thank entire you. talk thank you thank you professor bakshi thank you